guys, we're here at the Poudre River in the Rocky Mountains. Let's go check it out. or as we here in Colorado call it, the Poudre River. Cache le Poudre is actually French for the gunpowder hideout. So back in the 1700s, you had French fur traders that made their way up here and they actually used this river as a hideout for their gunpowder. Now it's one of the most scenic and popular river areas here in the Rocky Mountains. Let's see how cold it is. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> feels like a glacial lake. The headwaters for this river are high up in the Rocky Mountains. They're alpine and glacial lakes. So by the time they get down here, it's freezing cold water. Can you imagine tubing this? Some crazy Coloradans, they find this is one of their favorite pastimes here in Colorado. This section of the riparian ecosystem is actually really important. It's the overflow section. It's what we call the wetlands. So actually, all this debris that you see over here, it's been washed up into water levels. will actually be two, three, four, five feet higher sometimes during the high, heavy spring runoff season. Lucky for us, we still got some of these little tide pools out before we get totally covered with water. I think I got one. Reel it in. It's a fighter. If you look along the riverbank there, you'll actually see not a very scenic looking area for one of the most scenic river areas here in the Rocky Mountains. Well, back in 2012, we had a really big devastating fire. So those are the ponderosa trees that didn't completely get burned down. This, my friends, is a ponderosa pine, one of the most common pine trees here in the Colorado Rocky Mountains. They actually benefit from fires, right? So they're what we call serotonous. It's a big word, probably never heard it before. Serotonous means that they actually reproduce through fire. These cones are nice and bundled up, so to release the seeds, it actually needs fire to reproduce. All right, so the fire heats up the pine cone when it's still up on the tree to the point where they burst open and the seeds can fly out of the pine cones, spreading all over in the area. Once it grows nice and big, you're gonna get an adult size ponderosa pine, right? It's got the really thick bark as illustrated right here. To make sure it's a ponderosa pine though, there's one distinguishing factor. Yeah, if you smell creamsicle or vanilla, it's definitely a ponderosa pine. Look how cool this pine cone is. It's tinier than the size of my thumbnail. We're out here in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. And one of the common things that you'll find is a plant that looks like this. What you'll notice about it, it's really, really fuzzy. This is what we call mullein. It's actually an invasive species. So it's non-native here to Colorado. It got introduced and it outcompetes all of the native species in the area. So one of the most identifying features about mullein is this fuzziness, right? So there's a nice fuzzy layer on top of that leaf. So for all of you who are trying to get some fun in the sun, get your nature time during this quarantine, I bet you're probably running low on toilet paper. If you're wanting to go outside, this is actually what they call the poor man's toilet paper, right? So if you're running low, here's your new supply. You can come on out, pick some of it, use it, and you're actually doing us a favor by getting rid of one of these most commonly invasive species. So this is what it looks like in the, the winter time, right when it's popping up around spring, you'll see the leaves first. Then if you look over here, this is what happens to the mullein during the, the late spring to summertime. Uh, it goes through a bolting phase. So it's bolting up literally right into the air. Um, this part up here is where all the seeds are stored and you can see how easy it is for this to spread. So that's why it's a pretty common, um, hard to kill invasive species for the area. to stop and take a second to appreciate all of these beautiful different colors that you see here on this rock. No, someone didn't spray paint this rock. This is actually a living being. 
These are actually what you call a lichen. It's not a true plant. It doesn't even have roots. If you get a close up in here of it, try not to disturb too much of it, but it doesn't have any roots. It's literally attaching itself right to the rock. So what's cool about it is we call this thing, this lichen, a pioneer species. This is gonna be the first thing that starts to make an organic layer on top of plain old rocks. So at some point, you're gonna have this lichen die and it's organic matter, so it's gonna degrade and create that first layer of organic matter that you have that's going to give rise to then a new layer of plant species. So these true plants, right, they have roots. So they need to have soil to attach themselves in so they can suck up all those nutrients and water. Uh, but I mean, rock doesn't just have everything it needs. So we have to have this layer of lichen here to create that first layer of organic matter, which is why they're called the pioneer species. Look at all of these different colors we have here, right? There's seafoam green, which is my favorite color. There's lime green. There's an amber shade of green. There's an orange and brown all the way up there. There's multiple different layers of black. It's a mosaic of what we call lichen. What's really cool about this, they're their own species of lichen. I don't know about you guys, but I'm liking this lichen. That's all I got for you today. Thanks for coming out. See you next time. Happy hiking.